Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wrestle Watch podcast. This is the podcast focused on free agency in professional wrestling. I am Doug. And I'm Ryan here on uh, what turned out to be a busy week for movements on the Wrestle Watch tier list. A bit of spring t- cleaning we had this week here. Doug, uh, how have you been this week? I've been all right. Um, I did go to some wrestling shows. I went to the, uh, I was at the New Japan show on Friday nights in Chicago. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. That was, thought, a, that was a really fun show to watch at home for me, at least. How was it live? It was great. I mean, it was one of those, it's one of those shows where there wasn't anything incredibly blow away uh, mm-hmm. that you're going to remember forever, but there was nothing bad. It was just all really good to great. Yeah, that was what I noticed when I was watching it at home. Uh, Loved the Jack Perry show to match. Uh, Great atmosphere was had there in Chicago for it. Stephanie Vecora, Zumi, great. Good good time. I hope you had it. Yep, absolutely did. And then I will be in St. Louis for Dynasty next year. So that'll be next week. Next year. So that'll be (laughs) another one. Yeah, that's that's shaping up to be a fun pay per view there. Yeah, I'll be taking the train down as a as a good public transit advocate, so oh, that'll yeah. be good. But today we have uh, we're going to be focusing on the tier list, so we probably should do that. Yeah, how about we start all the way up at S tier because again we've had a lot of movements this week. It was kind of a spring cleaning for the committee this week. We wound up moving ten people up, down, off onto the tier list, so. What we're going to do this week is just go through the entire tier list to give people a sense of who's on there still, where they are, and what the tier list really kind of is at this point shaping up to be. Yeah. And if there's like, if there's some additional things that we would like to kind of touch on, re- either tangentially related to the people on the tier list, we probably will because I could think of a few of them. But in terms mm-hmm. of having a, a separate segment where we focus on one specific news item, I don't know that we're necessarily going to do that this week. Yeah. Um, so I think this is, yeah, as you said, this will be our, this will be a spring cleaning day to just kind of reset everything. Yeah. Uh, and just, yeah. just to uh, give some context of what, what's the tier list and what the individual tiers mean, I'm just going to read off what our, what our definition of the tier list is. Absolutely. Just so people have an understanding Uh, The tier list is a representation of the likelihood of a talent signing to a new major promotion within a year. It's not about whether they'll leave the current promotion or their independent status, but the likelihood of signing elsewhere. And just again, as a reminder, for our purposes, the promotions that we consider are the following, and this is in alphabetical order, uh, All Elite Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor, Stardom, TNA, and WWE, and that includes NXT as a possible landing spot there. We're going to start off with S tier here, and just to give people context of what we say when we're talking about S tier, it is a talent who is sign who is going to be signing to a new major promotion, and a debut is imminent, or has been regularly appearing and is generally considered to be signed without being announced as such. So somebody like Kota Ibushi, it's a perfect example of an S tier for that latter scenario. We're talking about something that is a 90 to 100% confidence range of this person is going to jump to a new promotion imminently. Doug, who do we have in S tier at the moment? So right now in S tier, we only have three wrestlers. And then as I read them, I just want to point out that the voting for this took place on Friday during the day Mm -hmm. before SmackDown took took place. So keep in mind that things will probably change next week. But right now, the three people we have are Camille, Tama Tonga, and Jacob Fatu. Those are the mm-hmm. three people we have in S tier currently. Yeah, and this is a good point uh, to make, is that we vote on Fridays because that's the easiest day to vote. It's you know it's the dead slot for news sometimes. So it's good to refocus and look at things every single Friday. Uh, we try not to do quote-unquote emergency votes as much. So Tama Tonga debuted this week on SmackDown, uh, and it happened just after we finish voting. So that's why Tamatanga is still on the list this week. But hey, look, we were we were right to have him in S tier already. So yes. there you go. And he gets another he gets a he gets free run for another week. So good for him. <laughs> All yeah, right, we so can, we can chat about him now for two weeks. Isn't that great, Tamatanga? You've made it. Yeah, good job, Roy. <laughs> and then maybe his brother eventually will be talking about it at some point too. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. He he will probably be coming up here soon enough. So 
we're, we're we can we, let's just talk about Tamatonga quickly then he's been eyed by WWE for quite some time he was inserted now into the bloodline angle with his debut with Sola Sokoa and Jimmy Uso segment where he kicked Jimmy Uso out of the bloodline reportedly as Doug just mentioned there might be some interest in Hikaleo or Tangaloa in WWE but at the current moment it looks like different person that's kind of in that bloodline sphere Jacob Fatu is imminent to be debuting he has been reported to be signed a WWE contract after not renewing his MLW deal it was backstage at Wrestlemania that's reported by Wrestle Observer Newsletter and Fightful Select Doug how are you feeling all of this so I feel like Tama Tonga is a guy who probably did it I, I want I want to commend him because he was someone who's obviously been in New Japan for well over a decade at this point. Yeah, um, he was he was back when Bullet Club uh, debuted, right? Yeah, so that was in 2013, I believe. And yeah. and yeah, and he's been part of the. I mean, he hasn't been. He wasn't in Bullet Club recently. He he left the faction, but he'd been a mainstay in New Japan for a long time. But he was a guy that every January we would hear rumblings of him, <laughs> you know, sticking his head out, looking around at the landscape yeah. and kind of had rumblings that maybe he was going to go. Maybe he was going to go. And then <laughs> he never would because eventually he would resign with New Japan. But, you know, you have to respect that because he was a guy who was using his leverage well. And he would leverage that the fact that he could go elsewhere against New Japan. And he yeah. probably... And he, I believe he lived in Florida almost the entire time that he worked for New Japan. So he wasn't someone who lived in, in Japan. Mm-hmm. So making a jump to WWE even now is not a difficult move for him. Yeah. And, um, yeah. An interesting thing in the uh, FIFO report was that it mentioned that WWE had interest in him back in 2016 when they brought in AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, then Tonga just opted to stay where he was working with his brother. So, and, and, yeah. And, and good for, and honestly, good for him. He did, uh, I think he's done well in New Japan. Oh, yeah. I do think there's people who've always kind of felt like he was just sort of a, a mid-carter there. And that was where he was going to be. He was never going to break out any further. And, you know, in, in WWE, maybe that will be a little bit of a different landscape for him. We'll see. Maybe yeah, we'll I see. mean... I mean, because especially uh, when we were talking about him previously, there was a lot of talk of, oh, maybe he'll do NXT. And for him to debut on main roster with uh, Solo Sokoa in the Bloodline storyline is a a bigger deal than what some people were pegging for him. And I think that it's going to be a really good opportunity for him. And it makes total sense now looking at it retrospectively of why he would make the jump. They were offering something that New Japan couldn't offer. And I think that that also sends a very strong message to anyone who's in another promotion currently, who's Mm -hmm. thinking of coming to WWE, that you're not necessarily going to be forced to go sit in the NXT warehouse for a year Mm -hmm. or so before you go to the main roster. You can, this is probably as quick a main event level jump I've seen from another promotion to WWE in quite some time. Because this is literally going from, uh, mm, another mid-card, promotion, yeah. This mid-card is like another promotion a, too. To, to like yeah. the main event angle, a main event angle in WWE proper. Yeah, uh, I don't think I. I'm trying to think. When was I? Don't know when the last time that's happened. Uh, I maybe back to 2016 with AJ Styles, even and even him. I don't know. <laughs> he he didn't go straight to a main event angle. No, no. He 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 debuted at the Royal Rumble and then kind of sat at the upper scene for a little bit before hitting hitting it off. But yeah, I, so. I believe he won the title probably within a year of deb- debuting the world title. I believe title. so. Yes. But it was, like I said, it was not a, I don't think he was in a main event title right off the main event pitcher right off the bat. So that's a little different. So, anyway, so that's Tamatanga. Yes, that's Tamatanga there. And I guess that's also AJ, uh, uh, excuse me, not AJ Styles, uh, Jacob Fatu there as well. Uh, yeah. Just mentioning same, him. Same thing. He's a guy who, once again, is going to be. You know, going, he's been pegged for a long time. He was big, big prospect in MLW. I've seen him live in ML, I, I've been to MLW shows. I've seen him live and he's, he's incredibly impressive. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised. That's why yeah. we've had him on the tier list as long as we've had him. 
Uh, and speaking of uh, somebody that's been on the tier list for a while, uh, now the the current uh, reigning and defending resident of S tier is Camille. Just wanted to quickly touch on her because she had a little bit of a uh, some replies in Twitter this week where she said that the decision uh, she had made her decision on where she wanted to go, and now she's just waiting. Uh, it was reported previously by Sean Ross Sapp that uh, it's unlikely that it's WWE that, where she's going, so it's likely i suppose then either aw or tna that she's going to be showing up in but it just i don't know why but uh she's just sitting around and waiting for her debut at this point so my hunch reading in the reading the tea leaves on that comment initially was that because they said it's unlikely to be wwe that means to me that it's probably come down to money and that someone else mm-hmm. is offering more money than <laughs> wwe is yeah, it's possible that, or or if if they were going to, uh, as we just were discussing with Tamatonga, push her over to NXT to start with. Uh, if if that's the case, then yeah, it could be both money and uh, placement on the roster. Yeah, and I would imagine if there's NXT, it's going to be a lower money deal too. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I imagine that would mean to me if it's money that it's probably going to be all elite wrestling. I think yeah. she's going to be an AEW. So we'll see. Maybe uh, she'll maybe she'll debut at Dynasty. We'll find maybe. Out. Uh, so the person that is now no longer a reigning and defending resident on S tier is Julia. Uh, this week we have removed her from the tier list. We have considered her to be a jump to WWE. This is due to multiple reports from multiple outlets that have reported that Julia has signed to WWE, uh, and she of course was on screen at NXT Stand and Deliver. A bunch of the reports actually likened it as Doug did to the indie free agent thing from Takeover's past, although they were saying it was much more of a definitive thing than I think Doug you were you were referencing last week about it. Mm-hmm. Um one source in particular was Corey Brennan and Fightful, who seems to be a little bit of a WWE whisperer. He has said that he has learned that Julia has agreed to join WWE officially and will finish out her remaining dates, which will include some time in Rossi Ogawa's upcoming promotion. Yeah, and apparently, I think it's tomorrow, we're going to be hearing a press conference from Rossi Ogawa on his promotion. Yes, yes, and we will be. it's going to be on Russell Universe, mm-hmm. which is interesting because that would indicate that it's a cyber fight promotion, possibly. Or yeah, that's under what... that banner. That's what some people were pointing out, but then they also mentioned that there are other promotions now that are not Cyberfight that are appearing on uh on that outlet. Okay. Um, so okay. it's 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 possible that it's them trying to do like a little bit of an extension of uh things that are not Cyberfight particular, but it's also definitely possible that it is Cyberfight. I we will find out tomorrow, <laughs> definitely which way it goes. Well, and I'll say this, and this is more of a broader thought. And just the idea that, first of all, AEW has always said that they're willing to work with everybody. Mm-hmm. Yes. That was that was kind of their mantra. It's like, hey, we're going to work with everybody. But if we're being completely honest, over the last six months or so, it definitely feels like they have melded into that New Japan, CMLL, like Ring of Honor, like little little circle that mm-hmm. ROH used to fill before AEW existed. Yeah. Where so where they're now have they have that stardom connection, the New Japan connection, that CMLL connection. I haven't really been seeing a whole lot outside of that. There's a couple with yeah. uh like then and AEW is still sending people to like Tokyo Joshi Pro and DDT, but I'm not necessarily seeing a lot of them coming over into AEW, like yeah, Yuka, Yuka Sakazaki is like a signed AEW talent, so she doesn't count. Yeah. Same with Takeshita. So it is interesting that we've seen sort of a little bit of a shift there. It could be nothing, but that's what I'm saying anyway. Yeah, it's a lot of the I will call it legacy acts for those promotions. So or legacy relationships. So you have you know Takeshita and Yuka that you mentioned before, but also things like the the folks that appeared on the Tokyo Joshi Pro. Philly shows were kind of legacy doing to uh, TJPW before. So Billy Starks, for example, was, you know, doing dates with them before she joined the AEW universe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, they they haven't 
explicitly ever said no we don't work with them anymore it's just that it seems that since they started the relationship with cmll in particular it seems that aew has taken a slightly more rigid approach of who they're bringing in and it might be due to if i were to prognosticate it might be due to cmll's rigidity about these are the people that could appear on screen with our people and all those kinds of things yeah and i and also in japan it could just be a a a secure a, a, a more firming up of that bushi road relationship in general and just and yeah that's just what to, they need to do yeah yeah just to make sure that the the stardom relationship is, is strong from the beginning yeah because we've seen now this this week azumi was on the show on collision uh mina sherikawa has a full-blown storyline in AEW right now <laughs> so uh it's it's definitely a big change from i i would say it's already a big change from how they're related to tokyo joshi pro where that was more like yeah we're gonna bring your talent in and we're gonna kind of sign them and um they're in AEW, but they don't really have hard and fast storylines there is in matches and now it's like oh yeah we have somebody from stardom that's in a main event storyline right now essentially she's part of a main the, the world title storyline yeah it's, it's mean, a big difference and you have anna J, who is now seems to be aligned with queen's quest i'm not sure but i guess she, we'll see what goes up in heavens with and that. She, she came out with azumi as her second so it seems like that's going to be the case and and so i think the tea leaves are that anna jay is probably going to be taking some time to go to japan and do some dates there that's what i'm i'm guessing so uh but yeah it's it's very interesting to see that side of it because there there are people that nominated tecla this week simply be due to this relationship development saying oh well now that stardom is established itself in the U.S. a little bit more of ex- allowing the talent to accept dates and has a strong partner relationship in the United States. Maybe these talents who were looking at moving to the United States or the other promotions, maybe they'll stay around and start them. The, the, the committee decided not to move Tekla down any farther due to that, but it's it's something to point out that this is this does impact the tier list and what we do here at WrestleWatch. It isn't just, you know, us, like, you know, having fun watching this fun stuff happened. <laughs> All right, so are we done with S tier then? Oh, wait, we didn't really talk about Julia. Oh yeah, but well, yeah, she's she's essentially signed to yeah. WWE, and we... that and that's that's coming from somebody that is. Uh, I, I would say Corey Brennan is probably at this point right now. I feel like a very strong WWE source. And so, and here's and here's yeah. the other thing with Julia. It's like she's gonna. It was already kind of said that she's going to help Rossi set up this promotion. The mm-hmm. fact that she popped up in Noah does make me think maybe this promotion is a cyber fight related thing. That's a good point there. That's a very good point there. But we'll see. Yeah. And uh, also just to mention, of course, that uh, Julia did not use an agent for her free agency and that William Regal did play a key part in the negotiations, which uh, kind of goes in hand in hand with what this thread that we've been talking about for some months now both on the podcast but before we started the podcast of it seems like there is a little bit of a William Regal is trying to build relationships with certain promotions in Japan yeah maybe that's why she went to NXT she yeah. got an agent she'd yeah. be she'd be in the bloodline angle right now otherwise oh if only <laughs> <laughs> uh so w- let's go to A tier next uh, as a recap of what A tier means it's a talent signing to a new promotion is considered highly likely so we're talking a 75 to 90 percent confidence range here for this currently at A tier who do we have Doug right now we only have two people to discuss and that's going to be the Motor City Machine Guns and then Mike Santana yeah uh not much more to discuss with them uh simply because we've talked about them in the past two weeks podcast so i think motor city machine guns we could touch on a few of the podcast episodes already but yeah uh, motor city machine guns seem fairly high likelihood that they're going to be signing with aew coming up here mike santana high likelihood of signing with tna yep i don't really have anything more to add to that yeah so uh let's just keep keep rolling here down to b tier where we do have some people that are uh, moved in here B tier means that a talent signing to a new promotion is considered probable, but there is still some chance of them staying with their current promotion or keeping their independent status. 
this is relatively speaking a 60 to 75 percent likelihood of prob uh, confidence rating of uh, that they're going to be jumping uh who do we have here in b tier so right now we have sheamus grizzled young veterans shelton benjamin mustafa ali Tekla, katsuhiku nakajima ricky starks and seth rollins uh, and and the two people that have moved into B tier this week, they both came up from C tier. We're talking about Ricky Starks and Seth Rollins. Who would you like to start with, Doug? Let's start with Ricky Starks. Oh yes, that, your that's, favorite. Because that's the one I agree with. I, <laughs> I agree that he he should be moved up to B tier. So absolutely. So uh, so yeah. spo spoiler. I I that means I don't necessarily agree that Seth Rollins should be moved up. But we'll Ooh. we'll we'll get there when we get there. There we go. All go. right, so Ricky Starks. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I've long felt, obviously, and I know I sound like a broken record. I've been banging the Ricky Starks drums for over a year that this guy is probably jumping, and I feel that it's more, it more or less, it's just because I feel he's someone who is really, really hungry to get a top spot, mm -hmm. and he every step of the way that has just been something has happened to kind of hurt it. Yeah. Like he's had the worst luck in AEW. And I really genuinely think that he is somebody who could be a major star, but I think he would fit better in WWE. I just, mm -hmm. I just think it is. And he, there's, there's no room for him to break through in uh, AEW right now is that the top of the card is just too full. I mean, I know yeah. there was a, there was a moment, where it seemed like Ricky Starks and Shane and, and sorry, Swerve Strickland were having this battle to be the first black AEW world champion. That was like this intrinsic thing that the two were doing. And it became very clear that Ricky Starks has lost that battle. Mm -hmm. And since then, he's been in the tag division and he was fine, but it was really, he was really lost in the tag division. And then even worse, he just got. He uh he got knocked out of this tournament because he got you know look he got his bell rung, and yeah. and now they're kind of just floating again and it's like you got to feel so bad for this guy, but obviously I think a lot of people are wanted to move him up because they saw the clip of him at WrestleMania when Cody won in the box losing his mind because once again he's very good friends with Cody, and I do not necessarily subscribe to this idea that he's going to go to WWE because he's Cody's friend. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Um, I think he's going to go where he's going to get the best offer and the best deal. Yeah. And maybe AEW would offer him more money, but for some reason, I really feel like he's a guy and there's not many of them. As I said, 90% of people are going to choose the, are going to choose the money offer. You know, but he's, a, but he's I, in the 10% you're I talking think, about. I think he would be in the 10% because I think he wants to find a way to break through. And I think yeah. that maybe WWE is going to be that. And that's also saying, I don't necessarily know that WWE isn't going to give him the better offer. Maybe they really do believe in him. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, well, so that's my, that's my thoughts. And I agree with the move to B tier. I think that's the correct move. So I, I, I voted for C tier personally, uh, just because there's not a lot of uh, hard line facts about whether mm -hmm. or not he's going to be going anywhere. If his contract, when his contract is up, all those kinds of things. Uh, some of these things are tea leaves about uh, things that have happened due to injuries to Ricky Stark, such as, you know, losing the match uh, against Top Flight was due to him getting an injury, not because they were booking him to lose. They booked him to win the match. Yeah. So so that's my feeling. And also, as you just said, like, yeah, I, I do not subscribe to the, oh, yeah, this person is in the box. That means that they're going to jump. Like, Bailey's not jumping. She just did a re-signing with WWE. She was at big business watching on for Mercedes because they're friends, you know, like I'm not I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, automatically Ricky Starks is gone just because of that. But I do agree that I, I really do think that as you were saying it about the 90 percent, I knew where you're going with that. I knew where you're going with that. And I I knew that I was going to agree that I think that he's in that 10 percent that it's not going to necessarily be about money because he seems very focused if you cut through the cafe if you need to go into what who he is as a person he seems really focused on wanting to get a, a higher spot on the roster and he wants to break out he wants to break out um and let's, and let's be honest even if he didn't get injured in that top flight match they weren't winning the tournament 
I mean, yeah, they, they, were, gonna, they weren't even going to get to the final because the final was going to be FTR versus the Young Bucks. Yeah, it, it, it just like is poetry of a, of a match for something that's called Dynasty. Oh, yeah, it's the two teams that are uh, multi-time winners and they're the best tag teams ever. And it's the pay-per-view called Dynasty. It just, it just makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> um, it does. So it's like I'm not really shocked. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really buying the idea that it's like, oh, he was, he lost this spot because of the injury either. I just think that he yeah. is someone who just, there's too many people to, to push right now and too many people to break through. And then let's be honest, Jack Perry, based off of what happened on Friday, he's probably going to be a massive star when he comes back. So it's oh, another yeah. person you have to break through. Yeah. He's, he's going to be a pretty big deal. I think when he comes back, he is going to, obviously, I think going to slot into the elite, he's going to be an upper mid card at the lowest at this point especially because now he has a good connection to new japan storyline with their upper card now like he could challenge john moxley for the iwgp and nobody would bat an eye right now i think so how about we uh skadoosh over to seth rollins now and touch on what happened with his movement uh this was actually a, a pretty even vote uh, it was almost 50 50 between people wanting to move him up to B tier and people that were saying to keep him down at C tier. I was saying keep him at C tier. And Doug, I'm I'm intimating that you were also on that train. Yeah, I, I am. Because I would say this with him. With Seth Rollins, I think Seth Rollins and Ricky Starks are similar in, in a couple ways. I think they are both someone that have kind of hit a ceiling in their promotion. They're never going to be able to break through as things are right now Mm -hmm. um, where they're at. And I think that they would both benefit from a jump. The reason why I don't think Seth is as likely as Rick, uh, Ricky to do it is because uh, a couple things. One, I do think that Seth has a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. He might be kind of comfortable and content in his career. I do think he's, said some comments in the past that do make me think that he's very much a more of a company guy. Mm -hmm. And also his wife is there. And I don't know that his wife wants to necessarily jump. Maybe she does. Now, having said that, do I think that he is someone who is driven by the idea? Oh, I'm going to get my Osprey match or I'm going to get my Omega match. uh, Or am I going to even let's being straight honest here, get more money. Yeah, might be. And that's why I think he is a, a genuine C tier 50 50. I mm-hmm. think that uh, the idea that he would be less than C tier, I, I, I've had discussions with people who think that no, Seth's not going anywhere. Seth is a lifer. I've had that discussion this week. I yeah. don't think he's a lifer. I think that he will move if the right, the circumstances are right. Mm-hmm. And, but I don't necessarily lean so far to say that he is more likely to jump than not. I really truly think he is a 50 50. And the people yeah. who are pointing out those Triple H photos, I get that. I do get that. But, I mean, I don't know the context of them. But I, I, knew, I know what people are saying. It's like, you know, you're backstage. You're giving all these people hugs. You know, mm-hmm. it seems weird after you. It's not like, hey, I will finally accomplish something massive at WrestleMania and won my titles like Cody did where he's hugging everyone backstage. You know, he, he lost, like, every single thing he did that weekend. Yeah. So it seemed weird that he's going to go back and hug like give these tearful hugs to Triple H unless, you know, I unless he's leaving. I understand that, but I also don't know what the context is. So I'm not going to read too much into that, but I will yeah. admit it was interesting. It was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. And that, that's something that we covered a little bit last week when we did the recap of WrestleMania was, was both him and Becky both had those kinds of moments after their matches where they seemed very tearful and that feeling of, yeah, this is me leaving the territory of, of going out on my back was the feeling of it. I mm-hmm. I bring I, I I feel a little bit more confident looking at those kinds of moments and trying to, you know, map them onto the tier list a little bit more than uh what we were talking about with Ricky Starks just appearing in a press box. Yeah. You know, because uh, those those are things that we've seen before from people where it does signal, yes, this person might be leaving. And you know what? We've it's the past. We know that they're in the last few months of their contracts. We know what like, Becky Lynch's position on what she's looking for. So I'm not surprised that people wanted to move Seth up. It, it is intriguing that Becky did not move up with Seth. 
uh, due to that. Mm-hmm. But that's just the way the cookie crumbled for this. Uh, I think that it's likely that I, I, I don't always, you know, love subscribing to the idea of, oh, this person's, you know, wife or husband is over in the other company. They're, they're going to definitely try to go and join them. Although there, there is something to point out about that as a positive of signing to a different promotion. But I, I do think that there is a possibility that Becky and Seth are looking at lining up their contracts coming mm-hmm. up here. Yeah. So that it's it's easier for them as a growing family. And we've had so many examples of like someone leaving the company while their you know, significant other was still there. I mean, mm-hmm. we had we got a, had a bunch. John Moxley left when Renee uh Paquette was still in WWE. We had Adam Copeland leave when Beth Phoenix was still in WWE and think she's yeah. still there as a in some role. And then we had even what Harley Cameron, her husband's in NXT. So it's yeah. like it's it's not uncommon. Yeah, it's not weird. So, but that I think that wraps up uh, the B tier uh, recap and explanations. You know, and before we go into C tier, maybe we should take a break and fill up our coffees. Yeah, that sounds totally good to me. We will be right back with the Wrestle Watch podcast in just a moment. Hey everybody, welcome back to Wrestle Watch, the podcast about free agency in the world of professional wrestling. This is Ryan. I just got back here with my nice cup of coffee, uh, brewed from Wawa, of course. How are you, Doug? I'm I'm doing well. I got my I have just I just have some Folgers. Uh, pretty simple. The best part of waking up. Yeah, we don't have a Wawa. Oh by yeah, by me. Uh, I've, I'm I've so never sorry. Been to, I've never been to a Wawa. You're missing out on so much. It's it's a magical land. Yeah. See, I have a Jewel Osco. I don't know what that is. What's that? <laughs> that this is our Chicago. It's a Chicago based uh, grocery store. It's very good. I enjoy it. It's very simple. Uh, working class. They're union actually, and oh. uh, but it's it's very good. I enjoy it. I got my Folgers. Folgers is fine. I'm not. A, I'm really not a <laughs> coffee snob. Like I can just as long as it's coffee, it's fine. I'm I, generally the same way because you know, Wawa is gas station coffee technically when you really get down to it, but I love it. I love it. Speaking of things that I love, it is the C tier of our tier list. It's the 50-50 toss-up tier. It really talking, is the most interesting tier in that it, regard. It really is because these this is the land of the, sometimes it can be forgotten toys, but it could be the most interesting people as well. We're talking the 40 to 60% confidence range that a talent will sign with a new promotion in the next year. Uh, this is also the tier that has some, most of the time it has the most people stinking it up this, yeah. this time of year. It seems like it's not as much it seems people are a little bit more confident than usual of either people leaving or staying with their promotion. So we only have four names right now in C tier, but I think these names are super interesting to talk about. Absolutely. So just going through the list in C tier right now, we have Kevin Owens, mm-hmm. Vin Balor, Becky Lynch, and then Leo Rush. Yeah. So I believe all four of these names were up for vote this week and all four of them remained in C tier from the committee. What are your thoughts on that, Doug? You know what? That's fine. I don't know that we necessarily saw any movement or reason to think otherwise with these these four. As you said before, I do think it's weird that we had Seth Rollins go up to B tier, but Becky Lynch went stayed in C. And my hunch is that because Rollins was booked in such a way to look like such a loser, and I don't mean that in like a, a negative way, just I mean that he <laughs> lost a lot. Yeah, at WrestleMania, that it really came off like a definitive goodbye. Mm-hmm. Whereas Becky Lynch is wasn't so much, you know, she just only had the match and lost. But you know, which is which is interesting though, because Becky Lynch was the one that actually went out there the week of WrestleMania and made all the comments that people took to say, "Hell yeah, we're gonna probably leave or or at least test free agency." Yeah, yeah I know my I know my worth. Her comments like that, and which yeah, absolutely yeah. mean that you know she's someone who is going to you know, want to get get her value. I mean, I think that 
I think that she is someone who, if she's not making more than Mercedes Monet, is going to take that personally. Yes, yeah. And and it's, I think, though, at the same time, that a comment like that, when you're still within the company and you haven't actually tested free agency, still means, especially because of the history that she has with WWE vis-a-vis -vis Seth, where, you know, he had a lot of history in the American scene with Ring of Honor before joining WWE. So people might be intimating like, oh yeah, maybe he wants to go back to the glory days and go back to that, you know, super indie sphere of, of collaboration and all those different promotions like the Ring of Honors, now the AEWs and New Japan's and all that kind of sphere. Maybe he wants to go back to that. Becky doesn't have that as much. She did have an indie career, but she's more famous definitely for her wwe run and, so it's and, interesting and that had, yeah go ahead i'd say and seth has like built-in feuds already like he's been mm -hmm. feuding with will osprey indirectly on twitter for like the last four years yeah yeah so, so it's, yeah so it makes sense but at the same time i think that comments like that from somebody like becky it makes total sense to me why you would say that's still a toss-up that's that's still a toss-up of whether even if she lets the contract expire i would say that it's still a toss-up and not uh, something that I would put a, I believe the term that we're using for B tier is uh, considered probable for jumping. I don't think it would be probable that she jumps. I still think it would be a toss up until the moment that we see reports from insiders that say she is going to sign one way or the other. I think that's fair. Uh, and then Kevin Owens, I think it's it's interesting, but I think also there just really wasn't any updates on Kevin Owens that led me to believe one way or the other of him staying or going more tea leaves i think once again i think he's a he's gonna be a he's in that 90 percent. he's someone i think is gonna take the money regardless especially yeah, because, if especially if the money is less uh, for less uh dates yeah and i think also because that's what happened the last time when his contract was up, was up three years ago he kind of took the money deal he stayed where he was. He stayed uh, going on and fighting on in WWE because he, he liked what he was doing there and he was given a great contract for it. So it makes yeah, sense absolutely. to me. Yep. Finn Balor and Leo Rush, I don't really have anything new to add to them. Finn Balor, we kind of think is he's 50-50 because he really is outside of J.D. McDonough, like the even more even more so after WrestleMania, like the least important person in Judgment Day. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really serve much purpose. Uh, other than like telling the crowd to be quiet when Dom is trying to talk. Yeah. And then Leo Rush, we we don't really have much of an update since last week when we talked about him. Yeah. So uh, that makes sense. Uh, how about we go down then to D tier where we did get some movements into D tier this week. Uh, as a reminder, D tier is a talent resigning to their current major promotion or continuing their independent status is considered probable. So it's the opposite of B tier but there is still some chance of them signing to a new promotion. So this range of confidence we're putting as a 25 to 40% confidence range that they will sign to a new promotion within the next year. Who do we have in D tier this week, Doug? So in D tier, we have Malachi Black, Buddy Matthews, Matt Cardona, Dustin Rhodes, Kato Kiyomiya, Matt Hardy, and Sammy Callahan. Yeah, and I think I think every single one of these, except for maybe Matt Cardona, was up for vote this week. Uh, Matt, Malachi Black and Buddy Matthews did not move from into D tier. They have been in D tier solidly. So as Matt Cardona here, Dustin Rhodes is a new addition to D tier. He dropped from B tier. Doug, what's the latest on Dustin Rhodes? Yeah, let's talk about Dustin. Because first of all, I, Malachi Black and Buddy Matthews and Matt Cardona, I really don't have anything to add. They've been in d tier i think they're fine in d tier yeah yeah but dustin rhodes is was an interesting one because i think a lot of people thought that maybe he'd finish off his career in wwe but recently on twitter you know people were saying you know someone asked him in a comment are you going to wwe or should you go to wwe and he was like nope i love it here and yeah meaning here being aew so um and i could believe that i mean he it's from what i understand he's basically just a trainer and yeah. he, he's got it looks like he loves his backstage role uh, and he seems to be enjoying it. And I don't really know that I see a reason for him to go back unless yeah. he wants to have that Cody match. But he's already had the Cody match like he the Cody match <laughs> that he had 
was like probably his, arguably his best match of his career. I don't know why you would want to go back and redo that. Yeah, it's it's funny because I I watched uh, a fun video from one of those uh, British YouTube channels that follows uh, wrestling. I can't remember which one it was that this video was for, but they were they were dream booking WrestleMania 41, and one of them booked Cody versus Dustin, and the exact you had the exact reaction that the other two people had. Well, they, how are they going to one up what they just already did? Like. They can't like even though it's a WrestleMania, they can't one up their their match from Double or Nothing. Um, oh yeah, there's no and, there's no point in trying. Yeah, and I think that the moment of Dustin going to WWE was this moment of building up to Cody Rhodes winning the championship. Uh, I don't see as much value in him in the storyline that they're setting up now for Cody. I do think at some point he will return to wwe in some degree to join the hall of fame um yeah. but i i don't see him necessarily doing another run in wwe right now at this point it doesn't seem as likely as it as it was before no i don't think i don't think so either so i think he is perfectly correctly placed in detour yeah uh and then who's next here doug that we had to Thank talk you. to kaido yeah Kyo kimia so yeah. so here's the thing with kimia um, he moved down to D tier from C tier, if I remember correctly, correct? He moved from C tier to D tier, yes. Yeah. So he's one where I don't think there is necessarily anything big that happened in the news regarding him. And I think that's why he got moved down, because I think for a while people thought that, well, maybe he's eventually going to jump to, to New Japan. Maybe he's going to eventually, you know, shift over there, especially during the G1 and things like that. And then that just didn't happen. And now I think people are like, well, He's probably just going to stick where he's at, unless I'm missing some news item that I, I completely missed, but I didn't see anything on him. Yeah, so uh, he has been in C tier since he was added to the tier list four months ago. The interesting thing is that we added him December 30th. It was the beginning of people saying Okada might leave New Japan. Uh, we had added Okada a week before in F tier, mm -hmm. so we had very low confidence in Okada actually leaving New Japan. We had far higher confidence in and, uh, Kato joining New Japan, essentially, was the, was the jump we were looking at. And, and since then, there just has not been any news. The only news has been external to him, and it's been things like Okada leaving New Japan and there being a vacuum at the top of the card. So it's interesting that we've moved him down after that. But the, the, the reality of the situation is that there just isn't any news about him leaving where he currently is at in Noah. So that's why he's in D tier, and I think that's that's fine to move him down. I I agree. I mean, if we if he was gonna, I feel like if he was going to jump, he would have done it by now. Yeah, and I think that what if and when he does jump, we will hear about it enough ahead of time that we will be able to uh, move him up if if that happens. Yeah, we'll get some rumblings. Then the next person here that is a new addition to D tier is Matt Hardy. He has moved up from f tier to d tier so we've increased the confidence that we have in a possible jump the reason being is that he is now officially confirmed that he is a free agent he is in talk still with aw but he seems to be uh open to a jump so what what are your thoughts on this doug uh i take it as just uh what it is, what it is on its face value and this is a guy who's just playing the field trying to get the best offer yeah. and right now i think it's a situation where he probably has a best offer from somewhere and maybe it's not exactly the offer that he wants mm -hmm. and he's trying to find a better one. That's just my, that's my read on it. So whether like TNA is offering him the best offer and he's still talking to AEW to see if they'll beat it or vice versa or even WWE, because I really I think a lot of people discount the idea that the Hardy Boys might go back to WWE one day because I mm -hmm. think that you know they they love a moment at that in in WWE and that and a big return like that is a moment so I don't discount that either but I think he's just uh to me I don't think this is a situation where he's looking to be creatively fulfilled at this point in his career I think he's just looking for the best payday and good for him yeah yeah this was actually uh the second most variance in votes that we had for any of the of the uh votes this week among the committee was for matt hardy 
uh, we had a, a we had a very wide range of opinions from people on where to put him, and I think that it comes down to the fact that we we don't really know necessarily who is going to give him that offer that he's looking for, whether it's AEW, which are, it looks like that they have a contract that they've offered him on the table, uh, whether it's WWE if he wants to do that nostalgia run, whether it's TNA and maybe they can offer him a little bit higher position on the card relative to what he has right now in AEW. We'll, we'll see where it goes with him. I think that there, there's going to be a lot that we're going to hear because he's somebody that likes to talk. Uh, but I'm not sure how much of it's going to be just smoke versus real news. You know what I mean? Exactly. So we'll see. This is a good transition because the person that had the most variance in the opinions of the committee this week was Sammy Callahan. Uh, he has dropped from C tier to D tier. What are your feelings on Sammy Callahan, Doug? I think it's the same thing that we have with Kiyomiya, where it seemed like there was a lot of talk about him a while ago, and he just kind of hung out in C tier. Yeah. And then eventually people realized, you know, he probably... If we, if we if he was gonna make a move, he probably would have heard it by now. Yeah, and... we 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 added him to C tier way back in September, actually, when he was like leaving C seven TNA. Month, seven eight months ago. Yeah, yeah, and he has not moved since. He has not left C tier since today. Um, it, it's just yeah, there's been no news about him going to a different major promotion. Uh, and he's been doing PPA work for MLW, which like the. It's not saying, you know, he's going to stay in MLW, but he seems content with what he's doing. Yeah, I think he was, I think it's similar to Kiyomiya, where we would have heard something by now if he was going to move. And he probably is just a guy who is similar to Matt Hardy, who is trying to see what the best offer was. And, you know, maybe he didn't necessarily find the offer that he wanted. So now he's just yeah. going to keep doing what he does. Yeah, and that's that's like that second part that, that we've uh, mentioned with, these things where it's about uh there's also about keeping your independent status so there is i, I think that there is you know less than 50 percent confidence that i have of him giving up his independent status at this point uh mm -hmm. between staying with mlw which is doing ppa so that's keeping being independent whether it's his own promotion of wrestling uh revolver seems like he seems happy about that because we just haven't heard any news of him wanting to do something other than that yeah that's uh my that's my read as well uh and that that gets us through the d tier there uh we have just the f tier left f tier is meaning that a talent residing to their current promotion or continuing their independent status is considered highly likely but there is enough uncertainty regarding this that including them is still prudent uh we're talking about something that's above a 10 percent confidence range so some of these people are kind of uh, sometimes it gets into tinfoil a little bit, I'll say uh, a little bit tea leafy, tea leaf reading, or it could be somebody that we know is going to have their contract up or that we know their contract is up right now. And we haven't heard if they're going, they've resigned. So the, the, the first name on the F tier, I think it's the perfect person for that is MJF. We, we, we know that there's a lot of kayfabe about his contract stuff. There's always been kayfabe about it, but we haven't heard officially that he's actually re-signed with AEW, so he's an F tier. That's that's like the, the perfect scenario of a description of that. Uh, who, who else is an F tier, Doug? Uh, we also have Suri, Daniel Garcia, Jeff Hardy, Utami Hayashishita, uh, Drew McIntyre, and then Hook. Yeah, so how about we start with Hook, just because he's the new addition to the tier list. Hook so, just got added this week after being off for a while from the tier list. Uh, what were you going to say, Doug, about him? Yeah, so I was going to say, so the big news with him was there was a report that uh, WWE is interested in him, uh, mm -hmm. which, understandable. And I think that based off of that alone, that would be enough to put him on the tier list. We don't really know when his contract is due, though, correct? So, um, so SES Scoop said that they had uh, seen that Hook is planning to explore his VA agency once his contract is expired. It's supposed to expire this year. 
Uh, Sean Ross Sapp was asked about it and he said that he hadn't heard anything about his contract. So he doesn't, there, there's nobody knows exactly when his contract is up, just that allegedly Hook is planning to explore free agency this year and WWE sources are telling people that they're clearly interested in him. Yeah, and I think that that makes sense. And honestly, I think as time gets closer and we start, as we get closer to when his contract is up and start seeing the, the signs of that, I think he will be moving further up the list. But right now, yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, at this point, we don't have enough confidence of of what's going on here. We have no idea when his contract specifically is up. We just have a source on WWE saying that they're interested. And we so don't know how it's... much, we don't even know how much Tony Khan's going to fight for him. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's hard to tell because here's the with Hook. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that Hook's kind of been downgraded quite a bit just in terms of his aura and personality. And I'm not I'm not necessarily someone who's going to like throw out the oh, heat vampire Jericho uh, line. I'm not necessarily <laughs> doing that. But However... he, he is someone who's just not. And I, I think it's maybe because they've started to do things that are exposing him a little bit more. Um, they're having him talk and it's very clear. He's not a good promo. Yeah. Um, and he's just in general, I think they're also having him be more of a baby face. And I don't know that that necessarily works well for him. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I've, I've noticed that recently he's been doing less pre-taped matches and more live matches, more matches that go actually over 10 minutes, uh, which were the two big things about, how he was booked up until now was that he was majority pre-tapes uh, on Rampage and majority matches that were less than 10 minutes, either squashes or just quick matches where he just throws somebody a few times and that's that's the match. Doesn't really mm-hmm. sell much, doesn't really do much otherwise, doesn't take yeah. a lot of bumps otherwise. A lot of people have drawn parallels to his booking to Jade's booking. I think that at this point, uh, Jade, like relatively speaking, Jade was farther along than Hook has shown to be uh, in how they've been... I, I don't necessarily mean in the skills that they had. I mean, also in w- how confident AEW was about booking them. So pushing her to do more promos, pushing her to do more matches where she's actually having competition happen to her. Uh, it, it felt like that was the case for Jade at this point in her AEW tenure versus where Cook is at currently. Uh, last night against uh, Shane Taylor, he had a far more competitive match. And by that, I mean got his ass beat by Shane Taylor for about 10 minutes and then won. Um, so uh, it's interesting to see how they're trying to start to expose Hook to uh, more variety in his match type and show off more of his skills. But uh, it, it has seemed like a thing that they had been protecting Hook for a very long time. So I would be intrigued to see him, just like I am intrigued to see Jade in WWE. I would be intrigued to see Hook in a WWE environment, honestly. I, I'm I'm not somebody that thinks that it would be, especially because some people have said, oh yeah, his gimmick doesn't might not work in WWE. I think it could definitely work in WWE. It could easily work in WWE. And I think that the environment that they have there could could be good for him, honestly. But that's all that's all more you know, things that we will think about if and when uh, things become more solid about his contract being up and more solid about him exploring free agency. I think those kinds of conversations will come more to fruition. I agree. You mentioned, of course, it was interesting that Jeff Hardy's in F tier and Matt Hardy's in D tier. I think that it's just because there hasn't been actual news about Jeff in particular. There's been news about Matt in particular uh, in the same kind of way that there's been more intimations about seth rollins than there has been about becky although there's more news about becky uh ironically yeah. i do want to talk about Suri real quick mm-hmm. i do think that she is someone that i'm going to be thinking about over the next week or so especially as it feels like she might be doing more stuff with stardom yeah and if that happens i mean i'm not i'm not ready to make it make it make a nomination to possibly change her yet but it's she's one i'm going to be keeping an eye on well we we did vote about her this past week and it was one of the it wasn't a high variance with the vote on that one but it was it was notable looking at how how big of a range people were voting on for her there, there were people that wanted to just remove her from the tier list there were people that were saying there was a 50 50 shot of her 
leaving her current uh, status is the best way I'll put it because she's signed to Sukiban, but we don't really know what that even means. Uh, so I kind of look at her as somebody that has independent status right now. Same. Uh, so I think that they're personally, I voted to move her up and I'm sure that you did too from the current F tier status. Cause I think that looking at how she's uh, starting to do some work with stardom, and looking at how stardom is seeming to open up a little bit more to signing talent that didn't weren't homegrown stardom, we'll put it that way. I think that there's a higher chance now than the the little uh, less than twenty five percent chance of her actually signing to a promotion like stardom. In my yeah. opinion, there's gonna, there's also just these talent that are we're probably gonna end up nominating like every week for <laughs> as long as they like Seth Rollins. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets nominated again. Yeah, uh, and there there was somebody else that was nominated for a few times in a row now that uh, we haven't added to the tier list, and I'm not going to mention who the name is, but uh, I think that there's a possibility that that person might join the tier list soon. So somebody that has dropped off the tier list who we might bring back on the tier list, actually, um, is El Phantasmo. He was down in F tier for quite some time, and now he's been officially removed from the tier list. So he originally debuted on the tier list back in December in D tier, and then he moved down to F tier in January. Uh, this was during the time when there were a little bit of reports going into Wrestle Kingdom that maybe he was going to have his contract expire and maybe he might leave New Japan. And I think when we moved him down to F tier, it was looking at the booking from Wrestle Kingdom where they became, you know, the double champs. People loved what was going on with them and everybody he, he, he's so over in japan he is ridiculously over in japan so we haven't heard much news about his contract coming up at all although it was intriguingly that i, I believe they just lost their belts didn't they they did to uh team dk on yeah Friday. and interestingly enough when we were looking at that report about Tamatonga, of course, there was the mention of that WWE has had their eye on Hikaleo, who is, of course, the tag partner of El Fantasmo. So there might be a little bit of tea leaf reading going into next week about all this. We might see some more reports of other people picking up the story and asking around to see, hey, is Hikaleo actually a target? What does this mean for El, Taz El Fantasmo? Et cetera, et cetera. So we might have more to talk about with El Phantasmo next week than we actually do this week. Yeah, we will see. That is uh, that is the way of the of the Russell Watch. Every week yes. is something new. <laughs> and then uh, I just wanted to mention then what what removing somebody from the tier list actually means. And and this also is uh, sometimes you've heard us before say the word delete. Uh, re I think we're gonna go in the direction of saying remove just because it doesn't sound as harsh of a tone we're going to delete you although if we're, it's matt hardy then we're going to delete him yeah uh, <laughs> uh gotta keep the gimmick up brother yeah so there's a variety of factors what can lead to a talent being removed from the tier list or just not being included from the tier list uh, this includes lack of interest from multiple major promotions lack of confidence in them moving to a new promotion or just lack of imminence of such a move and we tried to keep it as a one-year window so Something that's interesting with somebody, somebody like uh, a Malachi Black is that he his contract technically is up in, what, 2027, 2028. Nobody knows how far along it is, but it's a bunch of option years. And interestingly enough, again, nobody seems to have reported yet whether it's a team option, a AEW has the option, or if it's player option, if Malachi Black has the option to use sports parlance there. So it... That's kind of why, even though we are looking at Malachi as somebody that has a contract that is outside that one-year window, I think that people still have some confidence of a move happening within the year just because of all the rumors and swirlings about Malachi and the fact that it's an option contract. And we've seen before AW has not picked up the option for somebody if they requested it not to be picked up with Cody Rhodes, for example. Yes. And, and I think the thing... With some like Cody Rhodes is another example of that, where Cody Rhodes is someone that we still would probably consider on the tier list at a later point. Yeah. But, you know, his contract, he's he's it's extended at least another 18 months. So you know that. Yeah. So that's a year out. 
uh, or that's over a year out. So he, that's another reason to kind of keep him off the tier list for now. We can add him back on later when his contract is coming due. But yeah, yeah. We, I think that that's generally what we try to do is think like, okay, within the next 12 months, you know, that's it's not like a hard and fast rule where where, you know, we can't have anyone on there past there. But that's just generally what we try to do. Yeah, and that's the same kind of thing with the S tier, which is kind of like the the polar opposite tier to being removed from the tier list uh, due to, you know, that kind of lack of imminence. There, there can be times when somebody's debut just kind of sits there and waits, like Camille, it seems right now, is just sitting and waiting. But we, we know that she's signed somewhere. We don't know where. We have a, a very strong idea of where. And we know that she said, I am signed to somewhere. So we have a certainty that she is signed somewhere new from M- uh, from NWA. We're just waiting on seeing her actually debut. Uh, Mercedes Monet, she was essentially an S-tier forever. She was like the permanent patron saint of S-tier because we knew she was going to sign somewhere. It was going to happen pretty soon. And then it, it did happen, of course. And then we just waited three months for her to actually debut after signing. <laughs> Uh, and now we're waiting another month to see her actually wrestle after signing. It's so. interesting because we may be realistically just a few weeks away from having a situation where we have zero people in S tier. Yes, I think that is highly possible uh, of it happening here. I mean, I think that I think that demonstrates the idea that there is a free there's like a, a free agency season yeah. or at least a contract season. And maybe we're coming to the end of that contract season now where a lot of these people who uh, would be these imminent free agents are eventually signed, being signed away? Well, yeah. Like, I mean, you know, when AEW started, they, they did their big announcement in, in January of, of 2019, but they had their debut at the beginning of summer during the pandemic when they brought in people. It was all during the summer. So it's possible that we're going to see a lot of the AEW contracts come up in that period of time. You know, New Japan cycle is usually, uh, and I think Stardom cycle is usually around uh, January where the contracts end. Yep. So there is an ebb and flow to the contract season. And of course, WWE's big thing is the big Mania debut, the Raw after Mania debut. And now this year we had a SmackDown after Mania debut. And then the past also, uh, WWE has done their roster cuts around this time of year as well. So maybe we'll have some surprises coming up here to get added to the tier list coming up. Uh, hopefully not. Of course, I don't like people getting released from their contracts for no reason, but it could happen. But yeah, I think it will be interesting coming up here where we have a bunch of people in S tier right now where, of course, Tamatanga just debuted. So he's going to get off next week. Jacob Fetu is going to debut soon. Camille is going to debut soon. Uh, machine guns and Mike Santana and A tier probably going to sign soon. It's possible that S and A tier is just empty coming yeah. up here. And and to be clear, I mean we have also have a situation right now. I mean we haven't really talked about this, but WWE has been releasing a lot of office people, yeah, uh, or just a lot of backstage and production people. So that doesn't necessarily mean that's all they're going to be doing. It might be leading to talent eventually as well. So you know we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, I think that it's mostly a reshuffle of both getting through the transitionary people that they brought in after Vince left the first time and getting more quote unquote Triple H guys or more uh more endeavor guys into the roles, so to speak. Uh I think that they're also it, it seems that we, there have been some reports about them wanting to get the the stink of Vince off the company a little bit with some of the people as well. So We'll see if that uh, extends to talent, but I'm not as confident that it's going to. I think that it's more just the the corporate and production side that they're shaking up more than they are the talent side in that regard. It looks like they're trying to be active in signing talent right now, especially with people like Tamatonga, Jacob Fatu, Julia, etc. Yeah, I agree. So, Doug, is there anything else that you wanted to cover this week on the Glorious WrestleWatch podcast where we talk about free agency and pro wrestling? I think we hit on everything that I need to talk about. Awesome. Well, I think that we've hit on everything I want to talk about, except, of course, make sure that you subscribe to us on all the podcast platforms and YouTube. Follow us on the Twitter machine. This has been the WrestleWatch Podcast. I hope that you had a great time listening, and I hope you have a good week. And I'm Doug. And I'm Ryan, just finishing a sip of coffee there. (laughs) (laughs) Have a great week, everybody. Catch you next time.